So today we are going to be reading Toby Zebra and the Lost Zoo by Donna Lug Pape, illustrated by Norma and Dan Garris. Toby peeked out of the zebra house door. He yawned and looked around. It was dark and very late at night. He had been sleeping all afternoon in a dark corner of the zebra house. Toby went out into the yard. It was very quiet. Nobody was there. Nobody at all. Something is wrong, said Toby. Where is everybody? Why have they gone away? Then he saw that the gate was open. Hmm, he said, funny. This has never happened before. He tiptoed through the gate and stood quietly on the path that wound through the zoo. He listened and listened. Not a single animal sound did he hear. He looked into all of the cages. There were no lions in the lion cage, no tigers in the tiger cage, no monkeys in the monkey cage, and the big gray elephant was gone too. Hmm, said Toby. The animals are all lost. It's no fun being alone. I will have to find them. Do you guys know where all the animals could have went while Toby the zebra was sleeping? I guess we shall find out. He followed the path through the zoo and out onto the street. It was very late at night. No cars were on the street, no people were on the sidewalks, only a black cat was there coming toward Toby. Have you ever, have you seen my friends, the zoo animals? Toby asked, but the cat only meowed and ran into the shadows. Have you guys ever seen a black cat at the zoo? I don't think I have. Soon Toby came to some stores. The windows looked like cages to him. I wonder, said Toby, if I will find anyone in these cages. But there weren't any lions in the first cage. There were only all kinds of shoes without any feet in them. And there weren't any tigers in the second cage. There were only all kinds of hats without any heads in them. Hmm, said Toby. I guess I'll just have to keep on looking. He passed the school. He passed the church. He passed many houses and saw a river. He crossed the bridge. By and by, he came to a coal yard. Big piles of black coal were there. They looked like, they looked to Toby like mountains. My friends, he said, might be on these mountains. And he went into the coal yard and looked around, but none of the animals were there. Now Toby had walked a long way. He was sleepy. I think, he said, I will lie down for just a minute. Soon he was fast asleep. When Toby woke up, it was early morning, but now he did not look at all like a little zebra. The coal dust had made him all black, as black as a piece of licorice. Toby's stripes were hidden. He looked just like a little black pony. I hope I can find my friends now that it's day, he said, and pranced out of the coal yard. So do you guys think it was smart for Toby the zebra to wander off in the middle of the night to look for his friends or should he have waited until the morning until he found someone? I don't know. He saw many cars on the street. Many people were on the sidewalks. He stood right in the middle of the busy street. Pweet, pweet, 
Wham, policeman's whistle. The car stopped. What's this, said the policeman. A little black pony? He must be lost. A man came over with a rope. He was a friend of the policeman's. Poor little fellow, said the man, putting the rope around Toby's neck. He's lost. I will take care of him until we can find him his owner. They put Toby into the man's truck. Soon he was going for a ride. I wonder if this man will help me find my friends, said Toby. I miss them very much. Being by myself is no fun, no fun at all. By and by, the truck stopped. A little boy ran to the truck. Oh, daddy, he shouted. Did you buy me a pony? No, Billy, said the man. This pony was walking all alone on the busy city streets. Someone must be looking for him. We will take care of him. The man led Toby to a field and left him there. Toby looked around. He saw cows and horses, but no zebras or lions or tigers. What would happen now? He settled down to wait. Soon the sky darkened. Rain began to fall. The man and Billy came and led the animals away to the barn. By the time they got to Toby, the rain had washed away all the coal dust. Toby once more looked, was once more a clean little black and white striped zebra. So whenever Toby was covered in the coal dust, do you think that the policeman and the farmer took him to the farm because that's where ponies live? Or can ponies live in zoos too? The man pointed at Toby. You're not a black pony, he shouted. You're a zebra, Billy cried. You don't belong on a farm. So I guess that answers that question. And so the man called the policeman. They laughed and they laughed. Now that was a funny joke on us, said the policeman. They put Toby back into the truck and he went for another ride. It was not a long ride. Soon the truck stopped and there were the zebras Oh, Toby, they said. We missed you very much, very much indeed. And there were the tigers, and there were the monkeys. Toby, Toby, they chattered, we missed you. And the lions. And the elephant. Hello, hello, little Toby. They all roared happily. And there was a zookeeper. I thought we had lost you, Toby, he said. You must have been hiding when the animals moved from the old zoo to this new one. Welcome to our new home. Toby looked around at his friends, the zebras and monkeys and lions and tigers and the elephant. And he was so glad to be back with them that he pranced around and around and around in front of his nice new house. So how do you think Toby felt being away from his friends for so long? Do you think that he would ever get back to his friends at the zoo? And what do you think would have happened if it hadn't rained and the policeman and the farmer Never would have realized that Toby was a zebra instead of a pony. I guess Toby would have had a new home. <laughs> so this was Toby Zebra and the Lost Zoo.